Remember from the first lesson that we have tabs at the bottom of the Excel sheet. Right here, tabs at the bottom. We're going to look at our goals and instructions for this assignment first of all. So if it doesn't open up on the correct tab, just open it to the one with the goals and instructions. Okay, we want to add a scatter plot. We want to add a trend line. We want to look at new data. We want to look at slope and intercept formulas. We want to be able to predict values in data and how to read values off of a graph. Okay, so some good objectives for us here. All right, so let's get started. We want to first of all start off by looking at the data that's given to us. We're given slope and intercept formulas. We're told to write the equation, fill in the predicted boxes, and look right here, everybody. I didn't write my name, so look what happened. It says write your name in cell F8, right? So if that shows up for you, remember, write your name. Okay, so let's type our name. All right, Math Whisperer, let's go. All right, so we now have all of our data that have been given, data values that have been given to us. We're now going to write the intercept formula. Look, it's right here. It says intercept distance speed. All right, so let's click on that formula. I'm going to click my mouse up in the toolbar, and I'm going to type equals. And then I'm just going to simply write the word intercept. All right. As I do, you can see Excel is grabbing the formula for me. So just double click on that one. Known Y values. The Y value in this case is the distance. So I'm going to left click on the cell and drag left. Oh, don't do that. Don't want to change it. Left click and drag down to get the data selected. Put a comma. Left click and drag down on the speed. And I have my values given to me. I close my parentheses and I'm done. All right. You can now see that the intercept is negative 79.87. Remember, we can easily format this to something different if we want to, just simply by going to the toolbar and taking away decimal points, right? Simply clicking to take away decimal points. It doesn't say to me how to format it, so I left it with no decimal points. All right, next slope is the same thing. Type equals slope. Choose the formula as it's given to you. Highlight the data one more time. Left mouse click, drag down. Comma to separate the data. Left mouse click, drag down from column B. Close the parentheses. Your formula is completed. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and delete the decimal points. Take them away. So you can just give myself a whole number. Okay, so I have a positive slope of 19. I have a negative intercept of negative 80. All right, next it wants us to write the equation. In this case, everybody, our formula overall, remember, is y equals mx plus b. That's the basic form of the equation that we're writing. y equals mx plus b. But this equation is talking about distance. So this is stopping distance. All right, so we could say D for distance equals M, right, times what's the slope in this case? It's the speed, right? M right there. So M times S for speed, right, plus B, which is my Y-intercept. So I have a function of distance and speed. That's D and S. Remember, that is replacing Y and X. So the distance depends on the speed, just like the y value of y depends on the value of x. So now when I write my formula here, as looking for a function, I'm just going to write d equals, right? d equals m. What is m, right? 19. 19 times what? 19 times s, right? plus B, which is what? Negative 80. And there's my formula. D equals negative 19S plus 80. All right? And we are good to go there, guys. Let's clear this out. All right. Next. 
I need to write a formula up here. Remember again, the formula, everybody, is written down there right below. D equals the slope times the speed plus the y-intercept. All right, so let's do it here. Equals the slope, which is right here, in cell B21 times, that's shift asterisk, shift 8, right, for my asterisk, times what? Times the speed, which is right here, right beside it. See that right there in E12? All right, plus my intercept, which is in cell B20. All right, and I hit enter. All right, so if I'm going at two miles an hour, I have a distance of negative 42.2 meters to stop here, it says, given that information. All right, now remember, guys, I could drag this and pull it down, but look what happens when I do that, right? I drag, pull down, and I get values, why you say. Because look, I didn't lock my values in place. I didn't lose the absolute, I didn't use the absolute value, so my values all started moving down to places that have nothing to do with formulas because they're not numerical values, right? They're the wrong cell. So let's back out of this. I don't want this, all right? So let's delete this. You can just do the back arrow here on your Excel sheet, this back arrow, if it will let you, but it doesn't here. So I'm just going to delete it. Let's go back up here and let's lock the values in place. Okay, I'm going to use the dollar sign. So I want the B20 to stay in place. So I say B dollar sign 20. I want B21 to stay in place. So I say B dollar sign 21. Remember, this locks it vertically. I can also put the dollar sign in front of the B, but that locks it horizontally, and I'm not copying anything horizontally here. So you can use that keystroke if you want to, but it's not necessary. Okay, go ahead, hit enter. All right, I'm going to leave you with the rest of that. You guys, you can copy and paste. You can drag down whatever you want to do with that, right? Now I'm looking for a graph. All right, here it says to put a scatter plot, make sure to add and set the axis titles Set the chart title also to ensure restrictions on the domain and range. The graph fills the space and is easy to read. All right, let's make it nice and easy to read. So first of all, let's highlight our data. What are we using? We're using the speed and the distance, right? Back here in columns B and C. So I'm going to highlight that data with my mouse, left click and drag over the data. I'm going to insert a scatter plot. All right, and there I go. There is my graph. Let's just move it right here, right in place. Just grab it and move. All right, here I am. I can modify it slightly if I want to to make it fit the arrow specifically. And there I have everything I need, almost, right? Almost. Click on my graph again, choose plus, and I want to include axis titles. Okay, so my axis titles is, this side is the what? the distance, right? Because it depends on the speed. Okay, so this is distance. Let's get rid of everything unnecessary here. Distance. And just click on the other axis title down below. This is speed. Okay. All right, there I go. Now, if I want to change this graph up here, the title, I can just click on it and I can go ahead in here and I can write my equation if I want to, right? Because this is my function of distance. So this is D equals what? 19S, right? Minus 80. All right. And there's my title. Just click out of it. All right. Now we're looking pretty good, but we need to add the trend line, everybody. Okay. So the quickest way to add the trend line with the extensions on it, extensions to meet the data over here. Okay. So I want to use the extensions that would cover all of these values from 2 to 22. Okay. This data only goes from 5 to 15, but I want to go from 2 to 22. All right, so I need to do a little bit of work here. 
click on any one of the points, okay? Any one of them. Right click your mouse and say, add a trend line. All right, there's my trend line. Now I need to go backwards. I'm at five, I need to go backwards to two. So I need to go backwards three, okay? Back three. All right, I'm at 15, I need to go forward to 22. So I need to go forward seven. Seven. And there I am. And I want to display, display my equation. So I'm gonna click choose display of my equation. And there I am, everybody. I have my lovely little chart done. I have it labeled. I have my extensions. Everything looks perfect from here on out. All I need to do is play with the color if I want to. All right, last but not least, this says use your graph to approximate the stopping distance at a speed of 19 miles meters per second. Give an interpretation of the slope. All right, give an interpretation of the slope and intercept. Do they make sense? Okay, I'm going to leave that to you guys. All right, so you guys can easily fill that in. You can easily find a value at 19 meters per second, and you guys are good to go. So thank you much, guys. Have fun. I will see you in the forums. Take care. Bye.